but look out. Reneus and Scarlowie were talking quietly to Coldy next morning when Duncan stormed up, followed by Tangle. Hello, chuckled Reneus. Here we go. It nearly came off, fumed Duncan. Those coaches pushed me. The thick controller said they did it. He said I kept a bad lookout. We've no money to mend you, he said. And if it's again, I'll leave you at the back of the shed. Why does he always pick on me? It's not fair. Scar Louie said nothing. He just winked at Reneus like this. As you were saying, Gordy, remarked Reneus, you had two coaches on your trial trip. Do you ever take more? No. Our line is so steep that we're only allowed one. We each have our own. Mine's called Catherine. I know her well. That's most important. Why? asked Sandal. They're only coaches. Ours, said Coley, are something more. You pull your coaches and you can see ahead. We push ours up so we can't see. They watch the line for us. The guard watches too, of course. But Catherine is so clever that I know at once if anything is wrong. Lord, more trigger load of your mind, said Scarlowie. Cody smiled, but not off my buffers. Climbing's hard work and needs a lot of steam. My fireman and I have a tiring time. Coming down, he went on, is different. Catherine and I just roll. We need no steam for that. Sir Handel sighed enviously. I should like that, he said. With your automatic brakes, it sounds like a rest cure. That, replied Goldie, was just the mistake poor Godred made. Who, asked Little Engines, is Godred? Godred was our number one and named after a king, Cody replied. Perhaps that went to his smoke box and made him conceited. He'd never keep a good lookout. He'd roll down the line looking anywhere but at the track. You'll have an accident, I told him. Oh, he said, I've got all the made of brakes, haven't I? And driver's got his air brake. What more do you want? More sense from you. I said, no engine could stop at once if he isn't ready to obey his driver's controls. The first thing a young engine learns, agreed Scarlowie. God dread, never learnt sense. His driver and fireman and the manager all spoke to him. They even took the pieces to see if he was wrong. But he still went on the same old way. One day I was going up and waited at the station for Godred, coming down to pass me. As I waited, so it happened. One moment he was on the track, the next his driver and fireman jumped clear as he rolled over. No one was hurt. His coach stayed on the rails and the guard braked her to a stop. They brought Godred home next day. We've no more to mend you, said our manager. So you'll go to the back of the shed. As time went on, poor Godred got smaller and smaller till nothing was left. What? What happened? asked Duncan anxiously. It's not very nice to talk about, said Cody. But what happened? Why isn't it nice? Our drivers... Use Godred's parts to mend us, answered Coldy mournfully. Sir Handel and Duncan were unusually silent long after Coldy had gone home. Neither Scar Louis nor Reneus ever mentioned that Coldy made the story up. <laughs>